As a teacher, you will appreciate how exciting and engaging the topic of fireworks is. But how can you bring fireworks into the classroom safely? Well, here on Teachers TV, we'll show you how. We've come to Chew Valley School in Bristol, and I'm going to be showing some experiments to a willing guinea pig, science teacher Trevor Thorley. He's going to have to watch carefully because I'm going to pick some of the experiments for him to perform for the very first time. So let's get straight to the experiments. OK, Trevor, so our first uh, demonstration here is to do with oxygen, and I'm sure you're ah. familiar with the burning spill in... Oh, and the glowing spill. Yeah, yeah. Oxygen. Let's just have a look at that. OK. And we... Whoop. Beautiful. OK, so it really aids that combustion, doesn't it? Well, what now if you put a, a burning one into oxygen? Let's have a look at that. Put burning uh, into the oxygen. Into the oxygen. Really intense burn there. And by controlling how quickly materials burn, we can have really high energy release and then really uh, sort of gentle energy release as well. But we also use it with metals. By changing the amount of oxidising agent available to a metal, we can right. get the metal to, to oxidise really quickly or very slowly, depending and, on what we want to achieve. And iron is one of the metals that you It is indeed. Obviously, we, we, we don't fire. necessarily use wire wool, but you might recognise some of the effects when you see it go in. There, and it's sparking. You just see it sparking. Yeah, very bright. Really and... bright, but that sparking effect coming off, and that's that's what we use iron for. You get that really orangey effect, but you create sparks. A nice colour. It's a lovely good. colour, isn't it? We've got a mixture of um, a 50 50 mix of water and uh, ethanol in here, and we've put, added our metal salt. This is a little bit like a flamethrower, if you like. This We're going to spray good. our mixture across the flame, and we should get a nice puff of the, of the colour. If I, I'm going to do this one uh, just like this, and you just. There we go. Oh, beautiful. Really nice. And it's beautiful. quite wide, isn't it? Yeah. Rather than just very like little, visible. Yeah. Very visible. And also, it's going to keep our bunts nice right. and clean. We could try another colour, can't we? What have we got here? We've got some lithium nitrate. Um, so we'll have a little and, spray. And uh, lithium going to give us a. Should be a red. A lovely Look at that. red <laughs> flame. <laughs> nice colour. We'll try potassium. Yeah, the, the purple colour oh, seems good to old, be. Good old, uh, old faithful, isn't it? Plus you might want to do that with a light stand or something, but it's just, just another way good. of showing it, isn't it? Good demonstration, nice doesn't demonstration. it? This is a, yeah, excellent view of those colours. Of course, it's absolutely crucial to fireworks. Iron filings, very fine ones. We're just going to hold the spatula over the top and just very yeah. gently just allow Slowly the iron tip, filings yeah. just to, to, to roll off. So really, you've just got a little bit like that. Literally um, just going to hold... In fact, you can already see it starting to take effect, OK? It's sparking really well. That's isn't that, isn't that lovely? lovely? So we're not clogging the bunsen up, and that's really important. Right, now let's just look what's happening when the spark is burning. We've got that core that's you know, well over 1,000 degrees. Looks and if we put a bit of paper nearby and catch oh. some of those sparks, if we, we've got sparks hitting the paper, but we're collecting some of the, the actual dusty particles there, so you can see that actually those hot particles are hitting it. However, right. if I just touch the, the core oh. there, the paper's caught fire. So we'll put that into our, into our water there. It's and it's there. all to do with the volume and surface area ratio of those particles that are coming off. What mustn't you do once the spark has gone out? You mustn't touch, touch it. Touch any. No, that's right. We normally put any... it into water. Right, because it's, it's very... The rod itself is still very... The rod itself has got uh, a bigger volume compared to its surface so, area. So you've got your metal rod, you've got your sparks... And you've so got your it can be sparkler. after the sparklers ended sparkling where the, where the damage can that's be done. Right, that's where you can get a lot of injuries. So we have our solution of potassium uh, nitrate, and that's a saturated solution. And literally, it's a case of taking some strips of paper like this, dunking it into our... Making sure it's really soaked or... Yeah, yeah really soaked. Because you really want that soaked and really embedded in the, in the paper. And this is the, the time-consuming bit next, is to dry it out. So I, I usually use a hairdryer. Right. To demonstrate the fuse, we'll, we use these ones that we've yeah. prepared earlier. OK, so we'll just move that wet one out of the way. Now, all I want you to do is take a lit splint, OK, and just apply it to the end. And just apply that to, right to the end of your fuse. And as soon as it takes, just move it away. That's it, take it away. Now, what you can see, this is burning across very slowly. And that's exactly what happens in a fuse. It's that fuse principle. But it's not a constant burn. We've got some areas that have burnt quicker than others. So, actually, in the industry, we wouldn't use that. But it's an old type of fuse, a very simple type of fuse, to show that principle in a classroom.
We're going to start with a 50-50 mix of ethanol and hydrogen peroxide, okay, and we're going to set fire to that mixture, and then we're going to add an additional oxidising agent in the form of potassium manganate 7, or potassium right. manganate. So, if you can just light that, yep. Um, <laughs> okay, so that's, that's burning. burning. All we're well. going to do now is we're going to drop some of our permanganate crystals on top, okay, and you'll see what happens. Oh, yeah. Again, great. the lovely purple flashes. We've got our purple again. Yeah. But the crackling are tiny little pockets of intense burning, and that's exactly how we create a crackle in a firework. Yeah. It's intense burn followed by low energy burn, intense burn, burn, low energy burn, exactly as we've just seen there. That's really interesting, Well, That's good. Brilliant. There's this misconception with, with fireworks in particular that it's, they're too dangerous to do in the classroom, and obviously there are certain things you cannot do in the classroom, but there's quite a lot that you can. I think what we're trying to do today is, is show some fairly straightforward activities. We've brought out the links to fireworks, because there's lots. There's, there's forces, there's the chemistry, there's the flame colours. So there's a lot of stuff that you do generally in schools, but it's just knowing what links to make to fireworks. I think the key to doing any demonstration, not just firework demonstrations in the classroom, is don't be afraid. Have the confidence to do it, but you need to practice. Everything that we've shown today is well rehearsed and in terms of health and safety, make sure you consult the CLEEPS cards and the guidelines to handling different chemicals, but also to make sure that you carry out a full risk assessment. I've actually brought in some, um, some commercial gunpowder here. That's we, about the quantity that we need to really, use. Really, that would fit on a sort of beer bottle lid, something okay. like that. Yeah, okay, that's... it's probably best to do this in a, in a fume cupboard, but obviously we want to be able to see it here. Uh, I'm just doing it with a small amount. Right. Okay, okay. so yep. I will uh, light my... Uh, well back. Flame to the end of it. <laughs> like that. Oh, nice. Good it's of... lovely, isn't it? Okay. Uh, look, plenty of smoke, uh, and it's that whoosh. And you can talk and a, about... And a nice purple flame there. Nice purple flame. Nice... So what's that showing us? That's showing us... It's potassium, well, isn't it? In there it potassium, is, it's yeah. potassium nitrate, which is our oxidising agent. Of course, we've got sulphur and we've got carbon in there as well. I've got a drinks carton here with a bit of string on it. If you just mm. lift that up, just out of this lift bowl of water, water. Yeah, and just see what happens. Oh, it's spinning. Spinning round. OK. This drinks carton has got four holes in the corner, uh, and actually most of the water's dribbled out now, but the holes are in the left-hand bottom corner on each face. OK, so the water comes out and creates a little jet. Four little thrusters, like. Four little right. thrusters. This is our pivot point, so we've got yeah. a moment, so you can link to sort of turning forces and turning effects. And this is exactly what happens in a Catherine wheel. We've got driving rockets all rotating around a pivot point. And that creates our lovely turning effect. Newton's third law again. Again, yeah. Beautiful. That's lovely. About a balloon, it's got a narrow neck, we've got a reservoir of air that's going to be released under pressure, we've got a big blast of air coming out that uh, little neck. It's the rocket principle in action. If you just let that go, it's a bit... So, uh, yeah, it'll be just cool. let it go, oh. off it goes. OK, well, there we go. completely out of control. We have no idea where that's going to go. But you can control it by uh, making a very simple line rocket. I'm sure you might oh, right. have seen something like this. And we're going to propel along. That's right, so we've got this there. really thin uh, nylon uh, wire across the room. We've put a, a drinking straw on it, so we'll do the same thing again with a balloon, so blow a balloon up. Another balloon. Uh, we'll stick it on here, but we'll put a clamp over the, the mouth of the, the balloon. If I come round here with the tape, now, one piece of tape should be fine here. Right. In fact, I would recommend, if you do this again, maybe try a sausage balloon. OK, Goodbye. right, let's give it a go, see what happens. Let's see, let's release. Nice one. That's not bad, That's is it? pretty good. Yeah, for a first yeah. attempt. I've run a little bit of ethanol around the inside of this film pot and here. Uh, inside there, Just inside, yeah. yes. Right. I, I, I'm keeping the lid on at the moment because I want to keep the vapour in there. Uh, I've emptied out the excess liquid, so I've got a mixture of ethanol and air in there. But I've also got two tiny holes in the top of this uh, film oh, right. pot just yeah. there, you yeah. can just see. And I'm going to insert the ends of this modified piezoelectric uh, gas lighter. Now, if you look, I press that, you, you can see it just arcing a bit. And what we're trying to do here, we're trying to ignite the vapour in here. As the vapour burns, it will expand. Yeah. It will pop off the lid and we'll actually end up sending something off. And that's what we use when we fire shells, Roman candles. It's this idea of fuels burning, the gas is expanding and pushing Push something up. So I'm just going to thread my electrodes in here. So at arm's length. You ready? 
Oh. <laughs> oh. And that's how well, it works. Well, that made me jump. That made you jump. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a stoichiometric mixture of oxygen and methane in this half-litre bottle. Our mixture of gases is in there. Now, as we light it, Newton's third law, the oh. gases will expand. We've got our jet Come of gases out coming out here. It's going to create our thrust, sending the bottle that way. So we'll place it on our stand. Now, you can fire this, actually, directly on the, on the table surface, but I'm going to use a stand. It's going to be a little bit more directional control. We're going to send it over safety screens either side of our, of our rocket. Now, there's two ways of igniting it. Um, if you're a bit nervous and you, you don't want to put a, a flame on the end of a stick there, you can use a piece of electric device like this. This is one I've modified. It's a gas lighter. Okay. Uh, and we can well, get it a spark. just makes a spark. just makes a spark at the end. That, that. We're going to do it in a bit slightly more interesting way. We're going to use a, a flame. In fact, so, you're going to use a flame. Oh, dear. Right? <laughs> I knew so. <laughs> OK, that. yeah, okay. that'll be good. So if you get your eye protection, if you <clears> want to light your splint... Right. OK. I will take the lid off the bottle here. After we've bled the, the gases into the bottle, put a little bit of cling film over the end just to um, to keep the gas the gases in. Okay. Ready. Yep. Okay. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a really, gu really gutsy feel there, haven't you? You can really feel the... the you feel the shockwave, the shockwave as it goes uh, off. And, and, a, uh, and a beautiful flash coming out the back of it. And uh, accelerating extremely quickly. It was, uh, that's why. Yes, definitely. Great. What we're going to show you today are some chemical reactions, but the one thing that they all have in common is they're linked to fireworks. Where do you think you might have seen this before? The main issues that you have in teaching any science, physics and chemistry is to get over those ideas in a, an exciting, interesting way. So the gas comes out the back, and what goes forward? The rocket. Which famous scientist was it that came up with those laws of motion? Newton. Newton, good. The rocket really captured their imagination, and they could see how the ideas of Newton's third law came in. Yeah, that worked. Having seen the pupils' reactions to those uh, experiments, I'm certain I'll be using all of them uh, in my future lessons and linking a lot of science and chemistry to fireworks. So, girls, you've just seen Mr Thorley doing the experiments. Yeah. What do you think? Um, really good. Yeah, exciting. I like the rocket one. You like the rocket one? Why do you like the rocket one? Because it was just more exciting than others. It was like really unexpected. It was a shock. Like, was it loud? Yeah. <laughs> okay. What was it about the sparkle that surprised you? Well, it wouldn't really like cool down so quickly. I wouldn't have thought. I would have thought it just burned as soon as he touched it. But it didn't. I have to hand it to Trevor. He's done really well. We, we came in, we sprung these demonstrations on him and sent him off into a classroom. But his enthusiasm and passion for the subjects has really come across. Well done.